In my travels, I've gone out of my way to visit haunted locations. I've rented a room at the Haunted Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. I've traveled to Salem, MA, and toured all the haunted spots. I've been to castles in Germany, as well as concentration camp Dachau. I've gone to the Whaley House in San Diego. I've done midnight lantern tours of the Winchester House and haunted Gettysburg. Visited every supposed haunted location in every country I've visited, as well as around the States. I mention this because, although I did have a feeling at the Whaley House in San Diego, California, most of the other locations were just a tourist spot for me, mostly. I've had experiences in other places that I was not expecting. For example, a church in Dublin. This may sound weird, but it's at the times I wasn't expecting something to happen that it did. My experience at the church in Dublin was I kept hearing like a dull noise behind me. I was inside with my camcorder. This was back in the early 2000s. I kept feeling like my stomach was turning and like very depressed. Once I left the church, I felt normal after I ate and drank a beer. When I got back home, I played my videotape to my friends to show them my trip. I started to tell them about my experience. And my friend said, hey, turn up the volume. You could hear crying in the background, but not like one person, but many. The odd thing about that video cassette is for some explained reason, it later went missing. I live alone, so no one took it from me. Just till this day, I never found it again. Another experience was in Niagara Falls. Later in life, when I met my bride, we went to Niagara Falls for our honeymoon. Our hotel room was haunted, and once again, I felt something at Old Fort Niagara. My wife was after a while begging to leave the place. Another thing happened to me once when I was traveling for business. I was staying in some small town north of Seattle. I don't remember the name of the hotel, but at night, someone knocked on my door. I just happened to be awake and on my laptop, so I jumped and looked through the peephole, and no one was there. I opened my door and no one down either side of the hallway. No, can, no one could have been that fast as I was in the middle of the hall, but still, no one was there. So a couple weeks ago, our elderly neighbor died. She lived alone and has always been very nice to us. She was in her nineties. We are a younger family, so it was always nice to know she was next door, especially since we both worked during the day. She would keep an eye on the street. Whenever I was in my backyard, I would look over and always see her lights on and could hear her TV. She used to have the volume up kind of loud. It just got to be one of those things that you always expected. The past few evenings, either taking out trash or watering plants, I look over to a dark house now, no TV and no lights on. Since she is my only neighbor on that side, it's sad and lonely now. Last week, we were doing chores, mostly so we could have the weekend chore free. I was up a little later than usual, 9 p.m. Yeah, I know, we are party animals. So I'd gathered up some trash and was going to take it out to the side of the house where our bins are, the same side as my neighbor. As I'm putting the trash in the bin, I hear, hey, it was her voice. I froze and looked up to the dark, empty house nothing and no one is there now one thing you have to understand is that when she was in her backyard she would say hey how are you doing or just give me a hey that she was there anyway i opened my gate to see if there was someone out front the street was empty and the sound came from her backyard so i looked around for a bit i got chills up my back so i went inside i hope she's still checking up on us from above A few days ago, my wife complained to me that she heard someone in our backyard moving one of our patio chairs. It's odd we have a ring spotlight camera out back and it didn't pick up anything, but she said she heard one of our chairs being moved. I told her she must have imagined it. I looked out back, didn't see our side gates open. It wasn't windy and even on what we would call windy days, our patio, patio furniture is too heavy to move on its own. Other than a stray cat, we don't have any large animals that could jump our fence. Last night at about 1am, 
I woke up because I heard someone moving our patio chair and bump it to the table. Literally, I jumped from my bed and looked out the window. Nothing. Both gates closed, our ring camera didn't pick up anything, but on my shed I have a motion light and it was on. No one could have been that quick to jump the fence from the time I heard it till I looked out the window. It wasn't windy last night, but like I've said, our backyard doesn't get high winds or anything. And we never had wind move our furniture. Over the weekend, something happened in my house that reminded me of a weird thing my mother used to do before bedtime. She always made sure all closet doors were closed, and even if I remember correct, all cupboards too. Anything aside from the actual bedroom door had to be closed, even the bathroom door. If she ever woke up and found the closet door open, like if one of us kids went in there, she would kind of freak out. Although she never specifically said it, I always knew it was because of spirits or of ghosts or something like that. Growing up, I also had a friend whose mom did not allow mirrors in the bedroom. Even my friend had to cover up hers when she bought a handheld mirror to her bedroom. Just wondering if anyone else has had things like this in their family. By the way, the thing I experienced that made me remember this was Sunday night about 3am. I heard a loud bang from my closet sliding door. I'm sure it was the house settling, but dang, it made me jump out of bed. Suddenly, I remembered my mom always closing the closet doors before bed. When I was in high school, back in the early 1990s, I used to do many odd jobs. I never worked at McDonald's or Taco Bell like my friends, but instead, I worked off and on at an auto mechanic shop. I worked for a flooring contractor as a labourer. I actually worked several construction and demolition jobs as well as scalping concert tickets. I used to make a lot of money doing this stuff and always liked working with my hands. When I worked for a contractor, we once did a demolition job at a mortuary and we worked from 10pm to 6am, so we were out of there during business hours. We also did some restaurants, bars and stores usually working overnight since we couldn't be there during business hours. This worked perfect for me and I would work sometimes over the weekend or one or two nights in a row. Like I said, I made a lot of money doing that kind of stuff, way more than my friends did at fast food places working after school every day. One time, however, I was dropped off at an empty house. This was unusual because it was a Saturday morning job, which I didn't care because this meant the night was mine free. It was also unusual because it was a house. We mainly did commercial stuff for the contractor. So just for clarification, I worked under the table for almost all my jobs that I did back then. I was underage, but was as skilled as any adult, even more so than a few of the other workers. This one Saturday, I was dropped off at an empty house. My job was to tear out all the flooring, cabinets, tiles, sinks, toilets, well, everything except drywall and doors. I grew up in a somewhat remote town and this house was even more remote, just tumbleweeds outside and the house if I remember had a 1960s country look to it. So I go inside and the idea was just to gut the house and pull everything else in the driveway to be hauled away later. I brought my ice chest with drinks and lunch. The job should only have taken me about the day. I knew they'd be back for me about 4 to 6pm. I remember getting started in the kitchen. And I remember being upset that there was no electricity on because my radio's battery was almost dead. This is where things start getting fuzzy. I remember looking around at the house and making a mental note of everything I needed to tear out. I remember feeling like, well, a bad feeling in the house. It was older, not like it had been abandoned for a long time, but like maybe someone old lived in there for decades and never updated anything. I started to have weird feelings that soon led to complete lack of any power. Like literally, I felt like I had no energy. I ended up in a back room with the radio playing in the kitchen, and the next thing I knew, it was evening. I felt like I startled myself to wake up. I remember feeling like, where the hell am I? I got up, and it was silent. No noise, no light. I stumble outside and look around and was shocked to see that hours passed nearly the entire day. 
I went back in and started gathering my stuff and just locked up and waited outside for my ride to get me. I kind of got yelled at, but since I got paid for what I did and not time, it wasn't a huge deal, but I did refuse to go back out there and two guys I went out the following week and emptied the house out. Just so I know, it's going to ask. No, I didn't use any drugs or alcohol. I've actually always been very anti-drug. Seeing my older brother spiral down with his life at an early age made me against all drugs. I wasn't sick and there was no gas or propane on at the house, so no fumes caused it. Also, like I said before, I didn't work every day and when I was young, I had tons of energy that I could have demoed that entire house by lunch. The house just took all my energy and knocked me out. I wouldn't have normally slept like that in a dirty job site, especially one that gives me the creeps inside. About four years ago, my office moved to a larger facility. Just prior to us acquiring the site, we heard from employees of a business next to our site that an attempted murder took place in our alleyway. It's not known for being a bad neighborhood, but I think someone just saw an empty building and tried to kidnap and murder a female. That really doesn't have anything to do with what has been going on, but just adds to the kind of creepy vibe a lot of us feel. The entire inside of the building is automated. Every time you enter a section, office, bathroom, warehouse or storage area, or room, the lights automatically come on. Only a person walking can set off the lights. For everything else, you need an electronic fob. My office is upstairs and I have access to all the video monitoring, the entire office and surrounding parking lot. So I keep an eye on everything. Not spying on employees, but just making sure someone is up front when packages arrive, seeing who accesses our parking lot, who enters the gate, etc. In the past few years, we've had some unexplained occurrences happen. One Saturday evening, I get a call from our alarm company that our rear door was triggered and there was motion in our warehouse. I immediately pull up the camera system on my phone and sure enough, the door is open. I don't see any employees there. I was thinking someone ran in and went straight to the restroom and forgot to turn off the alarm. I didn't see anyone and no employee of vehicles in our lots. I told them to go ahead and dispatch police. I got up and went to the office on the way, the police called me to say they found the doors closed and no sign of foul play, so they took off from the scene. I get to the office after the police leave and have a look around. Nothing is tampered with like the door, door handles or locks. The strange thing is, the door is only opened with a keycard. The system tells me if, say, employee number 11 opened the door and at what time. I looked up our system and nothing. I check the security footage and sure enough, the door opens and the light outside seems to get brighter, almost like something is shining on the doorway. Then after about 10 minutes, the door slams shut. I see the police arrive and then leave, and then I arrive. At first, I attributed it to a faulty electronic door latch, so I contacted our security company that installed our systems and told them that the door opened by itself and that if they can come and see if there was some kind of fault in the system or if the latch was catching. Their report was that the latch was working fine and if the door had not properly latched, we would have been aware of it as it would have showed us open in the alarm system and we would have had to purposely bypass that door to set the alarm. There were no power failures, but in the event of power failure, the system goes on lockdown. The weird thing about it is, the door has an automatic closer so there's probably about four or more pounds of pressure trying to close the door. Also, the door alarm sensor tripped and the motion about 12 feet away from the door tripped too. Next, I wasn't there when this happened, but another employee reported that she heard a noise coming from the restroom and walked in to find the sink faucet was turned on. Strange, but not altogether proof of something going on. Maybe someone forgot to turn the sink off and no one heard it for a while. More than one person has reported noises and movement. One time one of our warehouse guys was working late and stayed late at the office because he wanted to let traffic die down a bit before going home. I confirmed this by watching the camera footage the following day. What he told me next that happened, I found very odd. He said that he left the office but went to sit in his car. 
He said he pulled up a video that he was watching and laid back in his car, which was parked in front of our office on the street. He said he wasn't asleep, but watching his phone just sitting in the car with it running. He said he heard a noise from the die of the car, like if someone lightly knocked on his door. He thought another employee had showed up or something, so we turned around and started to roll down the window. He said he saw a shadow of a person walking off, and it didn't look normal, as it wasn't that dark out, but he couldn't see anything but a shadow going away. He freaked out and put his car into drive and sped away. When I check the camera footage, I see him doing everything like he said, and then I see him almost peel out after some movement in his car. Other times, people report seeing something out of the corner of their eye, sometimes like if someone walked by but nothing is there. Another time they actually looked for someone who they thought entered our warehouse and found nothing. We've had several false alarms with movement in the warehouse and lobby, but probably the most further apart you can get in our facility. I have personally worked really late and have been the only one inside the building in the late night hours. Since everything turns off, there there is no motion in my office. It is the only section illuminated and surrounded by darkness. I swear I hear things I don't normally hear. Things like movement, walking, doors opening. Some I can trace like our ice maker in the office fridge dropping newly made ice. Or the sounds comes from the AC system that sounds like people are talking downstairs. This past Saturday evening, I had to run to my office to grab something. It was well past 8pm and dark outside. As I pull up to my building, I notice some lights on in the office. Now the only way lights will come on is if someone triggered them to come on by walking in that area. The lights in the center of the building were on. There's a 20 minute period of lights on after a section is tripped. So whoever was in the office was within the last 20 minutes. Thinking it might be the office cleaners, I open the door and say loudly, hello, anyone here? Knowing that no one was because the parking lot was empty, but you never know. I thought it was so strange that only the centre lights in the building were on. If you walked to that section, you would have tripped other sensors in the hallway and entryway, or backstation lights to the warehouse lights, but all of those were off, including all the upstairs lights. I still can't figure out how those lights were tripped. Our security system doesn't save video for extended periods of time. If a certain camera like a door camera gets high volume of use, the playback doesn't last more than about a week or two. I wish I'd saved some of the videos like the door opening and shutting. Yesterday, I was home alone. I took the day off of work to do a bunch of chores around the house. One of the things I had to do was turn in our old cable equipment and DSL router and get new equipment and install it. My house was built in the early 1950s. There is the upstairs part. We have a downstairs part that's a new addition, built sometime in the early 2000s. I only mention this so you can understand the upstairs of the house's raised foundation with wooden floors throughout. The new addition is downstairs on concrete foundation. Upstairs, you can hear footsteps of someone walking around with shoes on, with shoes off downstairs, it's a little harder to hear because there's carpeting and it's on concrete. So if someone was running across the house on the upstairs older part of the house, it's loud and echoey. Yesterday I was home alone. It was early in the afternoon. I was downstairs installing the new DSL router on the very far corner of the downstairs part of the house. As I was laying on the floor trying to locate the cables and put them in the right places, I heard a loud running across coming from the upstairs older part of the house. It isn't possible that someone came in and left because all the doors and windows have sensors that make a chime when a door or window is open. I did not hear a chime and no one who lived in the house should have been home. My wife is at work and my son was at school. I quickly got up and tried my best to listen to see if there was really someone in the house. I went to the upstairs older part of the house and looked through each bedroom of the kitchen, bathrooms, front door was locked. There's no way that anyone could have entered the house, run through it and left. I don't know what I heard, but it was definitely someone running through the upstairs part of my house.
When I was in my mid-twenties, I had a girlfriend that was 10 years older than me. I lived with her three plus weeks out of the month. When I didn't, I would sleep in the room I shared with my brother at my parents' home. One night, about 3.30 in the morning, I slowly awoke to the warm feeling of a nude woman behind me. She was up against me to the point that I could make out her body type and grooming habits. Her arm was around my waist and was giving off some heat. That is most likely what woke me up. As I was awakening, I made out the fact that I was at my parents' house and my brother was sleeping in the bed across from me. At that point, I was like, who the hell's behind me? I actually waited until I knew I was completely awake, moved my hands and feet a little. Meanwhile, I could feel the hot breath and breathing behind me. I jumped up as fast as I could and threw the blanket off, looked down, and there was no one there. My brother was like, what the fuck? And I was feeling the bed that was still warm to the touch behind where I thought I was sleeping. I was really expecting to find someone. My childhood home is haunted, but mostly steps and opening and closing of doors. My father said he saw a blonde girl in the hall once, but in the 17 years I lived there, this was by far the most intense. So I was 18, almost 19 when this happened, which would have put this back in 2013. My family and I lived in one close unit due to finances, which included me, my parents, my little sister 15, my older sister 23, her husband 25, and their daughters three and two. We also had a dog and about five cats with us at the time. Yeah, I know, it's a lot. Long story short, we were moving down from a part of Northern Florida down to a more of the central area. The new house we were supposed to go to into wasn't quite ready yet. So instead of fighting with a hotel for weeks on end, we decided to rent a house. An owner in the area had been nice enough to rent it to us for pretty cheap for a few weeks, which makes sense later. So right off the bat, the place wasn't terrible. According to the owner, the place had been built in the 1950s, but no one had officially owned it and lived in it since the early 2000s. It had pretty much just been passed to different owners and renters. The neighborhood, not the best. It was an older place and a few of the yards, thankfully not ours, hadn't been tended to, overgrown with weeds and wild plants that could go up a couple of feet up your legs. In Florida, you don't mess with those. Not only can deadly bugs and snakes be hiding in there, but a lot of the plants have the ability to sting you and mess your skin up. Hence why Florida is Discount Australia, as we call it down here. I guess calling someone in to deal with the wild lawns was too much money or too much effort, especially since some of these homes didn't look like they were being lived in. The insanity didn't really start until we first brought the cats inside. Our orange tabby, who was well known for being super chill and not giving two shits, acting like he'd lost his mind, yowling and scratching at all the doors like he was trying to get away from something, until I opened up a door to a bedroom. As soon as he could, he took a dive under the bed and hissed at anyone who tried to ease him out. It took him nearly a full 24 hours, even going to the bathroom under there before he came out. Note, all tile flooring, so while gross, this at least wasn't an issue to clean up. For the most part, other than that, things went well for the first few days. Rushed, cramped, but good. After about three days, my dad decided to return to a hotel closer to his new workplace, paid for by the company of course, and my mom decided to go with him, leaving the rest of us teens, young adults and toddlers at the house. We were in an older suburb with a, in a pretty busy area and had a couple different cars, so we weren't being abandoned. Long story short, that's when the nightmare started. I can't remember any prior experiences there other than the cat. All of us, including the kids, had horrible nightmares of either being chased or <clears throat> unalived, as it were. I don't remember all of the nightmares everyone mentioned, but I remember mine pretty clearly, of course. I woke up in a dark basement in a place I'd never seen and just knew something was after me. I had to run, knowing whatever it was, was always there and wouldn't give up. I woke up in a cold sweat. This kept happening every other night and nearly a week in, my little sister, brilliant on her part, 
decided to hit up an online friend she'd had for years who lived an hour away to ask if she could stay with them. Especially after the three-year-old started talking about the scary lady walking across the house. After said friend's parents came to pick her up, she spent the next two weeks with pizza and cable TV and no ghost. Godspeed, youngling. Real quick, in the house living room, there was this window that overlooked the back garden. It had a whole high area made of brick and ceramic where I suppose you could put plants to get food, good lighting. But it also served as a great place where my sister would let her two little ones stand up and walk around so they could see the back garden and all the wild lizards running around. For context, it was almost big enough for an adult to curl up on, so there was plenty of space. Probably about four feet from the ground, and yes, my sister would monitor her kids while they were playing up there, obviously. But this detail is important later. So anyway, the three-year-old started seeing a scary lady around the house. We'd ask her exactly what she'd seen as we were starting to gather. Not all was right in the land of Oz, but as you'd guess, Three-year-olds aren't great informants. It was just stuff about the scary lady and how she was really mean. Mind you, we'd gathered by this point that the place was haunted. One does not simply wander into Mordor and brush off the horrific bullshit placed before them. The problem was, we couldn't leave. No one else had anywhere to go, especially with that many pets. The hotels weren't animal friendly, and while you can hide one cat, Four extras and a whole ass 50 pound dog are a different story. So then, I had my own encounter with this thing. It was close to maybe two weeks of a three week stay. I'd been laying in bed listening to music so I could stim and calm down. I have ASD and ADHD, so it's a method I use before I can sleep. I was fully awake. I hadn't gone to sleep yet. I hadn't taken any medication. The blinds on my window had stopped working God knows how long ago. So there was plenty of moonlight coming in, illuminating most of the room. I looked down to check my iPod Nano, back when those were a thing, and after putting it back down, looked up to see a shadowy figure standing right near my head to the right, looming over me. I distinctly remember it was 10, 11 p.m. since, like I said, I'd just checked my iPod and had seen the clock in the upper part of the screen. Let me be perfectly clear, I was not paralyzed. I could move, and I know that because I grabbed the bed sheets, nearly peed myself, and had to actively think about not moving or screaming. My logic at the time was that this thing was uncomfortably close, and if I gave it reason to, it could mess me up. So I stayed there, eyes locked on where this face should have been, staring. There wasn't any big finale, any climax. It faded out of existence in a matter of seconds, leaving me alone and, thankfully, my bed dry. When we were rounding up our last couple of days there, all of us, me, my older sister and my brother-in-law, were eagerly packing up our things ahead of time. We wanted out and fast. So that things could get done in a more timely manner with the things my sister's family had brought, my brother-in-law gathered things up while my sister watched the kids, letting them play up on the earlier mentioned windowsill. Mind you, I didn't see this happen. I only heard about it shortly after. I'd been in the room I'd been staying in, reading one of the books I'd brought with me in my bag. My sister swore by this, a couple of times, but after that could never bring herself to talk about this story again, understandably. She'd been watching both of her girls as they looked through the window and out of the garden, when the dog started to bark, probably at someone taking a walk. She swears she turned her back for only a moment or two, yelling at the dog a few times to quiet down since she couldn't just run over and leave her girls. She turned back just in time to see a two-year-old with a dazed look on her face, the cords from the blinds wrapped around her neck, arms outstretched, walking towards the very edge of the ledge. Naturally, she plucked up my niece, and while she doesn't usually condone spanking in that kind of situation, giving my sister a swat on the thigh was the first thing that came, mind, came to mind. She said her two-year-old, a usually endlessly wild little girl, jolted and gasped as if coming to her senses, sat completely still in her arms, and then burst into tears. She hadn't even reacted when my sister grabbed her. We were done. We peeled out of there real quick. After that, it was worth looking for other options, no matter how stressful it would be. I still live relatively close to this house, probably no more than a 15-minute drive across town. 
Yes, I remember exactly where it is and what it looks like. Yes, I went by there recently to get a peek at the place, to see some other poor sap's car in the driveway. No, I didn't stop the car or get out. Fuck that, and fuck that house. This was how I got interested. Found out I was sensitive to a few things, and became an occultist and practitioner in my more recent years. There was lots more to this story, but these were all the huge details and all I could reasonably cover.